All right, so it's our only notes for the week and our last notes of the first quarter. So that went by pretty quickly, and it's a continuation of our uh, related rates notes. So let's just get going here. Uh, I'm going to let you read that, um, and then hopefully maybe you can pause. And remember, step one is uh, draw a picture and write down as much uh, variables and as much information, things you're trying to find uh, as possible. So we have an intersection. I feel like just pausing the video and saving ourselves some time, but you should pause it and try to set this up in practice. So the police car is approaches from the north. So the police car is up here, and there's another car over here that they're chasing. It's already gone through the intersection. So when the cruiser is 0.6 miles, so this is 0.6 the car is 0.8 miles to the east. Okay, the distance between them, okay, so that's right here. I'm going to call that C, like a hypotenuse of a triangle. So the distance between them is increasing at 20 miles per hour. So That means it's a rate, miles per hour. So that means that dc dt equals 20 miles per hour. Okay, the cruiser is moving at 60 miles an hour. So I'm going to call this y. So dy dt uh, is moving at 60 miles per hour. But the y is decreasing, so it's changing by negative 60 miles per hour, okay? And so, put a little note on here, um, negative because y is decreasing. All right. What is the speed of the car? So that's going to be this. I'm going to call that x. So that's going to be dx dt. That's going to be a question mark. All right. So I think we have pretty much all the information that we can use there. So that's step one and two. So step three was an equation. So hopefully you have some options here. You can think about this. What uh, can we use here? We have three sides of a right triangle. So that's going to be the Pythagorean theorem. So that's going to be x squared plus y squared equals c squared. Now, the next step is to take the derivative of our equation. So the derivative... I guess we'll do it here. So that's going to be 2x. Now remember from our last lesson, we're taking all our derivatives with respect to time. So this is going to be dx dt. Hopefully you're pausing or working ahead when you can. It's going to be 2y dy dt equals 2c dc dt. So if I multiply that whole thing by one half, that's going to cancel out all of those twos. Okay, so now we want to uh, evaluate, step five is to evaluate it all the, with the information. So x is 0.8. The two's gone. So we have 0.8 times dx dt, which is what we're trying to find. Plus y, which is 0 0.6, times uh, dy dt, which is negative 60. And over here, we have c times dc dt. So we know dc dt is 20, so the question is, what's c? So if we come back and calculate, at, this is at that exact moment. So we can use the Pythagorean theorem right there 
to figure out what that is. So in the equation here, that would be 0 0.6 squared plus 0.8 squared equals c squared. So this is 0.36, and this is 0.64, so that's 1. So c equals 1. And the rate of change of c was 20 miles per hour. All right, so if we multiply by 10 here, that changes that to 6. So we'd have 6 times 6, times six would be 36. So if we, negative, so we're going to add 36 to both sides. So I'm going to change that. That's 8 over 10, which reduces to 4 over 5, or maybe I could leave it 8 over 10. And so to solve that, we want to multiply by the reciprocal, both sides or the whole thing, however you want to look at it. So that's going to be dx dt equals 36 over 4 is 9, 56. Got a little careless there, be careful. 20 plus 36 is 56. So 56 divided by 4 is 1, 4, 14. 14 times 5 is 70. So 70 miles per hour. All right. A searchlight is positioned 10 meters from a sidewalk. So here's the light, here's the sidewalk. This is 10 meters. A person is walking along the sidewalk at 2 meters per second. The searchlight rotates as it shines on the person. Find the rate at which the searchlight rotates when a person is 25 meters away. So you could put it on either side and you could have them walking. It's going to change some things a little bit, but I'm going to put the person up here. And I'm going to have them walking they really should tell you which way uh, you're going so I'm going to change that for next year. So next year I'm going to add a few more words to the problem and let people know that the person is walking north and they have already passed the light. So that would put them up there and going that way. Okay, and a person is walking along the sidewalk. So I'm going to call this Y. And so they're walking, so... They're walking at a speed of 2 meters per second. Setting these problems up by yourself would be a good idea, or trying to at least. So that's going to be dy dt, 2 meters per second. All right, and then it says the searchlight rotates, so it shines on the person. Find the rate at which the searchlight rotates. So that has to do with theta in there. Okay when the person is 25 meters away. Find the rate at which, so find d theta dt, the rate of change of the angle. Okay, so that's about all the information I think uh, we can find there. So we need an equation. So it's pretty similar to the hot air balloon question from day one on this. Um, we have an angle and we have sides. So you have some choice as to what you want to do for your equation. I think uh, we need the variable in it for sure. So don't set it up uh, using cosine because that leaves your variable out. You have to have a y because you have a dy dt. 
So make sure that you have a y in your equation. So opposite, I'm going to do adjacent because the number is smaller. That's the only reason. So opposite over adjacent is tangent. So my equation is going to be tangent of theta equals y over 10. Or you could put 1 tenth y. Might be better. All right. So we're going to take the derivative of that. That's going to be secant squared. Derivative of tangent is secant squared. And then we have um, 1 tenth y. The derivative of y is 1, so we just have 1 tenth, but it was with respect to y, so we're going to have dy dt. Okay, so we have what? We have dy dt. Oh, I left off d theta dt. That's awkward. d theta dt. At least I caught it. All right. So this part is uh, easy. Um, dy dt is 2 meters per second. So we've got uh, secant squared theta d theta dt equals one-tenth times two. All right? Now, the question is, what is theta? But we don't actually need theta. We need the secant of theta. So if we go back to the triangle, when this is 25 and this is 10, and if we think about it, um, Cosine theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse. That would be 10 over 25, and that reduces to uh, 2 fifths. But the secant is the reciprocal of cosine. So if we just flip that over, that's going to be 5 over 2. So now we know what secant equals. So secant is 5 over 2. We have secant squared. And we're trying to find d theta dt. And if we multiply that, that's 2 over 10, which is 1 fifth. Okay. And so that's 25 over 4. Excuse me. So if we multiply by the reciprocal, we find out that d theta dt equals 4 over 125 radians per second. Okay. This question is a little bit odd because, well, we'll see. All right, so here's some basic formulas um, for some volumes, but this says we have a cylinder coffee pot with a radius of 5 inches. So that's 5 inches. The depth of the coffee is h inches, so that varies. That's a variable. The volume of the coffee pot is changing, so the volume of the coffee pot is changing at this rate. Okay, so again, pause, try to do some of the stuff yourself. So that's telling you dv dt equals negative 5 pi root h cubic inches per second. Okay, find dh dt. So that's what we're trying to find. That's our question mark. That's going to be in inches per second. All right, so that's pretty much everything. The picture's already there. We filled in everything. We filled in what we're trying to find. We want to include that when we do a related rates question. Include, I used to give a point for that on the free response tests in class. I would give a point for indicating to me that you knew what you were supposed to find. Now this one is, I mean, usually it might not say exactly like that, but. Okay, so the next thing we need is a formula. So the formula for the volume of the cylinder is over there. It's the base area times the height. So the volume would be the base area times the height. 
Um, the base area is a circle, so that would be pi r squared times h. So the thing that's a little bit unusual about this is this is a rare case where we would actually plug this in now. Because r is not a variable in this, equa in this situation, the radius is always 5. That's not going to be changing. So it doesn't really come into play. So our volume form is actually going to be 25 pi times the height. All right. So then that was step three. Step four is to take the derivative. Remember step one and two kind of are the same thing as far as I'm concerned. But So you take the derivative. The derivative of this is 25 pi dh dt. Because the derivative of h is just one. And then because it's with respect to time, you have that. All right. So now this is negative 5 pi root h. And the question said, it didn't give us a specific, like at a certain height or a certain time, or there was no other information. So we're actually going to solve this, and this is another reason why it's weird, uh, with respect to uh, h. So we're going to divide both sides by 25 pi. So the pi's cancel, that reduces. So that's going to be negative root h over 5. So dh dt equals negative 5, whoa, that reduces. Negative root h over 5 inches per second. Okay, this next question is a little more uh, important. Uh, it's in your book, so make sure you do those two. Don't skip either one of those. Even Don't even skip 36. Well, it's even. Don't skip it. It's a test question. It's been on the AP test before. Practice it. All right, so step one, draw a picture. So we have... A street light here and we have a person walking and we have a shadow so oh, the person is over here <clears throat> I'm not going to draw them in so the person the woman is five feet tall and the person is walking at four feet per second directly away from a 20 foot okay so that's 20 now the rate that they're walking away from the light is related to this variable here so that's how far the woman is away from the light and that distance is changing dx dt is changing at four feet per second away from the light so this distance is getting bigger so that's going to be positive four feet per second All right, and now the question is, at what rate is the tip of the shadow moving? So the tip of the shadow is over here. So that is this distance here. So I'm going to call that Z. So the question they're asking us is, what is dz dt? Okay. So what we have here, what we want to recognize, and hopefully some of you recognize it, is similar to the cone question. And in the cone question, we had similar triangles. And so we're going to have similar triangles here also. So I'm about to write my equation, but what I'm going to do is I need, I need this. So if you look at, I don't want a third variable though. So if this is z and this is x, Think about how you could express that without introducing a new variable. Okay, so that's going to be z minus x. z minus x would give us what was left over here, and that helps us not create a new variable. 
So here come the similar triangles. So I've got the little triangle here and then the bigger triangle. So this is 5 over 20. I guess I could have put 20 over 5. Um, 5 over 20. So then that means I'm going to have z minus x over z. All right. So what we should do now is we should reduce this to one fourth, and then we should cross multiply. So that's going to be z equals four z minus four x. All right. So if we subtract a z from both sides and add four x to both sides, and then since I'm trying to find dz, I want to get uh, z by itself, I think. So z equals 4 thirds x. All right. Similar triangles. And now we're to step 4, which is to take the derivative of both sides. So that's going to be dz dt equals 4 thirds dx dt. And dx dt was 4. So that's going to be 4 thirds times, oops, usually I switch that to light blue. So plug in the 4 for the dx dt, and so that's going to be 16 thirds feet per second. Now, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to set up part 2 to shorten the video. Um, the setup is very similar. There's one small difference. So see if you can do that. All right. So that, that part's all the same. Now, one of the pieces of information they gave us was the rate of change of the distance of the person to the pole. Now, the question has changed here. The question they're now asking us is well, how, how fast is the length of the shadow changing? So we could use that same setup, but it would get a little tricky. So what we could do is, instead, they probably won't ask you to do both of these things. They'll just ask you one or the other. So whichever one they ask you, you want to set it up the way that it's easier for that question. So since they're asking us about how long is this, I want to make that my variable this time. So I don't want to use s because that looks like a uh, 5 kind of. So I don't really want to use uh, z again. I'll just call it A for the length of the shadow. All right, so I know dx dt is 4. And here the question is da dt. How fast is that changing? So we're pretty good so far, but uh, we still have these similar triangles. So we're still going to want this side of the big triangle because we're going to go with uh, 5 over 20 again. Oops, that's my equation. It's supposed to be in red. 5 over 20 equals A over A plus X. So again, that reduces to 1 fourth. That's going to be A plus X equals 4A. So x equals 3a. They're asking us to find da dt, so I'm going to divide by 3. So a equals 1 third x. So now we take the derivative, the step, uh, step 3. Step 4, da dt equals 1 third dx dt. dx dt was 4. So that's going to be 4 thirds feet per second. Now, there is another way we could have done this. So if you think about it, if we know what dz dt is and we know what dx dt is, then we ought to be able to find out what I called da dt. So combining these, if you had both, 
would be dz dt minus dx dt equals dA dt, or any variation of that. So the dz dt was 16 over 3. Um, this was 4. And if we subtract that, so we multiply this by 3, that would be 12 over 3, which would be 4 over 3. So that shows how those three things are connected. But most likely, like I said, we wouldn't do both of these things, so we wouldn't use that. All right. <clears throat> Here we have an AP question. And this is number three from 2007. And in 2007, um, the old AP test uh, questions one through three were a calculator. But you don't need the calculator. The calculator is not helpful on every part of a calculator question necessarily. Okay, so on calculator questions, we want to type any equation we have into y1. Okay, so we would want to type this equation into y1. All right. The wind chill is the temperature Fahrenheit, the human feels based on the temperature. Uh, the wind velocity, the wind chill is affected by the wind velocity. It's in miles per hour. Some students mess up those units, so be careful that you pay attention. Uh, 32 degrees, then the wind chill is given by this formula, and it's valid from 5 to 60. Find the derivative of this. So this is pretty basic here. So if you typed in y1, uh, if you typed in wv, then all you have to do is go to the home screen after you type that equation in here and you hit the derivative button which is above the 8 I believe or you can go to the calculus menu and derivative is probably the first one so you take the derivative and in the home screen it puts a d in a parenthesis then you type the function now our function is going to be y1 of x now one of the things a lot of students leave off is the x part there you have to have that then we are going to put comma x. That's because you can take a derivative with respect to different things. We've seen that now in a couple lessons. In 2.5, we had dy dx, and now in our related rates questions, we had dx dt and dy dt and dc dt and all those different things. Now, you're going to do such that, that's right below the equal sign, I think, and then you're going to type x equals, and they're telling us to evaluate this at 20, so you're going to do 20. Now, you do not write this stuff on the, cal on the AP test. They do not want to see the, what you typed in a calculator. So all you would have to write on the AP test is W prime of 20 is approximately negative 0.286. And it says using correct units. So if they want the units, they're going to tell you that. So that's important. Okay. So this is what you do on the calculator. This is what you put on your paper. Um, degrees Fahrenheit per mile per hour. So that might seem a little awkward to you. So you might want to look in there. V is in the velocity is in miles per hour. So if we take it, the derivative of that, we're taking the rate of change of that. Okay. So what is that saying? It's saying when uh, the wind velocity is 20 miles per hour, then the wind chill, then then... The wind chill is changing at negative 0.286 degrees.
degrees Fahrenheit per mile per hour. Now, if you said the wind chill is decreasing at a rate of, then you would not put the negative on there. The word decreasing would imply that it was negative. So you want to be careful about that little detail. All right. So just to break it down for you, uh, that decimal right there would be worth a point. And this explanation would be worth a point. Uh, free response questions are usually worth nine points. Um, so, part B. Find the average rate of change. The average rate of change is a slope. The average rate of change is a slope, okay? So, over the interval, so that's going to be W of 60 minus W of 5 over 60 minus 5. And the nice thing about that is we should have W typed into Y1. So all you have to do in the home screen is type Y1 of y1 of 60 and that'll give you that answer in the home screen so and then you can actually type the whole thing in so you put that in parentheses and do y1 of 60 minus y1 of 5 I guess I could have kept the calculator side on this side and kept that over there um, so make sure you can type this in your calculator and get the same thing that's going to be negative 0.254 degrees Fahrenheit per mile per hour. Okay. Now it says, find the value of V at which the instantaneous rate of change of W is equal to the average rate of change of W. All right. So you want to be careful here. So what they're asking you is, W prime of what is equal to W of 60 minus W of 5 over 55. So we just had this calculated. So what you want to do is you want to type this. We have this value approximately right here. So what we want to do is store this in A. And then we want to solve this equals A, because that's what that is. Okay? Do not, this is all calculator stuff right here, so you wouldn't write that on the AP exam. Okay, so how do we type that in our calculator? Well, we can go to the algebra menu on the top. I don't remember what that is. F4, maybe? Maybe. So, you're going to type, you're going to click solve in that menu. Uh, I guess I could find it for you right here. So, where is, that's calculus. Algebra is F2, and the very first one. So, F2, solve, enter, and it says solve right here. And you're going to type this in. So that's going to be solve. I guess I could tell you where it is. So in the home screen, that's uh, F2 uh, algebra. And then number one is solve. All right, so we're going to solve. And what we can do here is take the uh, derivative of y1 of x comma x equals a so solve this equation this is the equation that it's solving with respect to x because we can solve an equation to any variable we want to Sometimes if we have uh, distance equals rate over time, we solve that for time. So 
we need to tell the calculator what variable we want to solve for, and that's what this is on the end. Just like when we do a derivative, we tell it what variable to do the derivative for. And when you do that on the calculator, you get 23.011, and that's going to be miles per hour. And part B of the question didn't ask for units, so we're okay. All right, so some more points here. Uh, they're giving uh, one point for this, and they're giving one point for this equation, setting those two equal to each other, and they're giving one point for this answer, and no points for that units because up there it doesn't say anything about units in part B. Your units here, this has to be included in that answer to get that point. All right. And finally, part C. So over that time interval, temperature is a constant 32 degrees. At time equals zero, the wind velocity is 20. The wind velocity increases at a rate of 5 miles per hour. What is the rate of change of the wind chill with respect to T hours? And it says indicate units of measure. So if you don't have the units on there, that's going to be a big deal. So at 0, it's 20. So 0 hours, 20 miles per hour. Hours, miles per hour. Okay, so the velocity is equal to 20, 20 miles per hour is what it starts off, plus it says it's increasing at 5 miles per hour per hour. Okay, so every hour, so after one hour, the wind velocity is 25 miles per hour. After two hours, the wind velocity is 30 miles per hour. So that's the formula for that. And we're looking at that at t equals 3. Okay, now the question says, what is the rate of change of the wind chill? What is the rate of change of the wind chill? Indicating this measure. Okay, so what we're looking for is dw dt. All right, now if we, we can get dv dt by taking the derivative of this. So that would be 5. Okay. So we want dw dt. So if you think about that, that was w of v is our formula. So if we take the derivative of that, if we want with respect to time, then we're going to need the derivative of that times, using the chain rule, the derivative of this. This is a pretty hard problem, so especially when you can't see it at all. <clears throat> so, 0, 20, the velocity, if you read the question again, you can't see it the same. So the velocity is equal to 20 at the beginning, and then it increases 5 miles per hour every hour. So after one hour, it's 25 miles an hour. After two hours, it's 30 miles an hour. Okay. And then they asked us for the rate of change of the wind chill. We could find the derivative of V by just taking the derivative of that. That's 0, and that's 5. If we go back to our original function of wind chill, it has velocity inside of it. So we take the derivative of that. That's going to be a chain rule, the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. Okay. Good. And once again, that was my warning call uh, that I'm getting close to the end of the day here and I have to get out. Um, so if we go back to this, the velocity at 3 seconds, that's just going to be 20 plus 5 times 3. So this is a harder, this is hard, but it's only a couple points here. And they're getting you partial credit for different things, so I'll show you that in a second here. So that's going to be uh, 35. Okay. All right, so V is 35, so that's going to go in here. And dV dt, that's right there. All right, and why did this come out that way? That was the chain rule. 
Okay. So, um, that we can just type in the calculator. So the same way we did uh, w prime of 20 up here, we can type it in the same, except we can do uh, 35 right there. That'll give us this number, and then we can multiply that by 5. So that's all on the calculator. So that's going to be negative 0.892. And it would be a good idea for you to do this on the calculator to check. Uh, this one's going to be per hour at time equals three hours. Okay. So some points on here. Uh, having five somewhere will get you a point. And having 35 somewhere will get you a point this answer will get you a point. And the last point is for having the units on A and C. Okay, but you have to have them both, they both have to be right. Units on A and C. One point for the five. So you can get partial credit even if you can't put it all together. Okay, and I gotta upload this to YouTube and then get out of here. So, that's probably that's pretty tough right there. The other parts of that are more reasonable.